Welcome back to Garden Talk. Today we're talking about fruit, bearing fruit, what is fruit, um, you know, how do I, how do I make fruit, what should I be, what should I be trying to do to get fruit. Uh, fruit is a really hot topic, I think, with, you know, Christians, because we want to see progress, we want to see the fruits of our labor, we want to know that we're on the right track, and fruit is evidence of you know, being connected to Jesus and, and being uh, a Christian. <laughs> um, so, one of the things that I want to talk about in the garden specifically is soil. Because really, a, a plant is only as good as what it's grown in. A plant cannot be healthy and thriving and bearing fruit and all of these these positive things if it's planted in terrible stuff I mean if if there's no um, if there's no nutrients or moisture or anything like that then the plant can't can't thrive it can't grow it can't survive and we are we are really fortunate that Jesus the vine is in God he says that he says I am in the Father and the Father is in me and he also says that we are um, you know we the people are the branches in him and he is in us and so Jesus he is planted in the most perfect thing possible he is planted in God he is growing from God he is he is in God and God is in him but what is that what does that mean so um, as a gardener, as like a, an earthly gardener, um, you know, we want to make sure that, that our soil has what it needs to bear fruit. Because really, a fruit is going to be um, made up of things that came from the soil. It's made up of, um, you know, phosphorus and potassium and magnesium and calcium. And all of these, all of these elements that are in the soil, the plant uses those to create fruit. If those things are not present in the soil, then you will not have the fruit that was intended. Um, so as a gardener, you know, we often supplement and fertilize and, and put things in our soil so that it will be um, able to bear fruit. God, <laughs> he's already perfect. We don't need to supplement him at all. And if Jesus is, is in him and, and God is in Jesus, then the elements, the, the parts of God that bear fruit in our lives are gonna be th right there. They're gonna be flowing through Jesus into us and then have an outward you know, fruit. So what do I mean? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Those are all characteristics of God. Those are all things that he exhibits and that he wants us to exhibit as well. Because when we are when we are acting in love, when we have, you know, joy from, from Jesus and from God, those are reflections of him. Those are duplications of his image. Those are ways that we honor and glorify him because we show the world parts of who he is. And I think that's so it's just so cool because I always thought fruit was the stuff I did like like the works the actual the actual actions but really fruit when you think about it it's a duplication of what was planted it is how the the plant reproduces itself that's what fruit is that's what the, the purpose of fruit is to, to house that seed or those seeds that are then going to multiply that original. It's it's not um, it's not the original, you know that that's important to remember. But it's it's multiplication of what was planted. So um, in the Old Testament, God told the people, you know, be fruitful and multiply. He told them to you know spread upon the earth and and multiply. And what were they doing? What were they doing then? By multiplying, by having children, if, if uh, man was created in the image of God, then those children are also created in the image of God. So from the very, very beginning, the first command he gave to people 
was to duplicate his image. And in the Old Testament, we see that, you know, every time, every time it says fruitful, it is talking about, you know, physical multiplication. It's talking about, you know, maybe a fruitful vineyard or fruitful, um, you know, animals or people being fruitful. It's talking about that physical duplication, the, the physical, you know, reproduction. And then in the New Testament, fruitful is only mentioned a handful of times, but it's talking about spiritual fruit. It's talking about spiritual reproduction and showing the world who God is. So in the Old Testament, before Jesus, before the Holy Spirit, it, it was a very physical and literal duplication of God's image. And then now, obviously we can still have children and all of that, but the true way that we can show the world who God is, is to bear fruit that is that resembles Him. So that love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, if you don't have that list memorized, I suggest you do because it can really help to um, motivate you when you realize what the fruit, the spiritual fruit that we're told to bear really is. It's showing the world God. It's not being a perfect worship leader. It's not, you know, serving others with every last breath that we have. We should strive to be as great as we can, but that's not the fruit because God, God sees our heart and, um, you know, all these things that, that we do, we might not even be doing them with the right motives. God sees that, you know, we have that love, we have that patience, we have, you know, these, these genuine reflections of him and that is what brings him honor and glory. The works are, are a result of the fruit. The fruit itself is, you know, what is manifesting in our hearts and um, that fruit, you know, causes us to do things, you know, serve others or, um, you know, serve God or honor him and glorify him with, with our actions and our works. But those actions and works are not the fruit. Just, just like if I have, um, you know, a tomato plant here or something and I have the fruit, you know, I might use that fruit to go make a pasta sauce or something like that, but that pasta sauce is not the fruit. <laughs> Um, the fruit is that reproduction of what was planted and if we are not planted in in Jesus if you know we as branches are not connected to him if our connection is not strong then the things that he is bringing to us from God you know there's an interruption in there and we're not gonna to thrive and flourish as we should if our connection to him is not strong we should seek to remain in Jesus in every circumstance so that we can grow healthy and strong because the vine, the vine is healthy, the vine is, is doing great. The vine is planted in the most perfect thing possible. So we need to make sure that our connection to that is healthy and strong and that should be our um, our focus, not, not works, not um, you know, trying to prove ourselves or anything like that, focusing on Jesus and bringing him into all parts of our lives, that is how we will grow fruit. Because it's not from our nature. It's not because of what we do. It is because of who God is and who Jesus is. Then the fruit will come. We don't have to worry and be so focused on bearing fruit. We need to be focused on remaining in him because his nature in us will naturally produce fruit. So, as you go about your day, um, I just want you to remember that Jesus, Jesus is, is in the most perfect thing possible. And we have access to that because of our connection to him. So I just think that's super awesome. We just talked about how the fruits of the spirit are really um, duplications or you know replications of who God is and his character. And so I wanted to take a minute and just kind of show how scripture um, reveals to us that God exhibits these fruits that we are also meant to bear. So the fruits of the spirit, the first one is love. First John 4, 8 tells us, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. So 
I mean, that's the most straightforward you can, you can get. When we love, we are showing um, the world God because God is love. Joy. Psalm 1611 says, You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. And this verse is reminding us that there's joy in God's presence. When we are in his presence, we are filled with joy. Joy is something that comes with God. It shows the world, it shows us God, because true joy is, is in God's presence. The next one is peace. 2 Thessalonians 3.16 says, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with all of you. Peace. The Lord of peace. God is the God of peace. He brings peace. He is peace. He, um, <laughs> you know, peace, peace belongs to him, basically. And so when we have peace as a fruit of the Spirit... Again, we are showing the world a characteristic and an aspect of, of who God is. Patience. Second Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. The Lord is patient. God is patient. And when we are patient, when we exhibit that fruit of the Spirit, we are reflecting God's image because he is also patient. Kindness. Ephesians 2, 6-7 says, And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. If God were not kind to us, undeserving people, he wouldn't have sent Jesus. He is kind, and, and he proves it by sending you know, his precious son down to perish for us. And again, when we are kind, when we exhibit kindness, we are reflecting part of God's image. We are, we are showing the world that God is kind. Goodness. Psalm 145, 9 says, The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. Now, goodness and kindness, I mean, they're, they're very similar, at least in my mind. But there's still a difference, and they were still listed, um, both of them, each of them. And the Lord is good to all. The Lord is good. God is good. And when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, when we remain in Jesus and are connected to him then goodness will come out of us as well as a reflection of Jesus being in us and the Holy Spirit working in us. Faithfulness. 2 Timothy 2.13 says, If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. So God is faithful. I mean, I feel like as Christians we say that all the time, or at least I do. God's faithful. God's faithful. And when we are faithful, when we are filled with faithfulness and, and express faithfulness, we are, again, showing an aspect of who God is and his character and how he works. Gentleness. Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29, Jesus said, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So, again, Jesus is gentle God is gentle I know I've experienced that personally you know I feel <laughs> very thankful with the gentleness that God uses to correct me at times obviously he can um you know just like we discipline our children in different ways depending on you know which kid it is and the situation and the lesson to be learned um it is it's always nice when God is gentle in his correction and in his um, teachings. I, I I don't deal well with, you know, really harsh and um, stern words, but gentleness, I, I can learn from gentleness. And so when we are gentle and we are 
showing God's gentleness to the world, we are reflecting him. And then finally, self-control. Psalm 86, 15 says, But you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. So God, he is slow to anger. He is, he has self-control over, <laughs> over himself. He doesn't hastily do things. And we also need to have self-control. We need to be um, patient, slow to anger, and mirror him in this way because it brings him glory and because we were created to mirror him. We were created in his image and the fruits of the spirit um, give us that, you know, that opportunity to express his image to the world, to ourselves. Um, so overall, the fruits of the spirit, they really show us who God is and they remind us that we were created in his image and for his glory. I mean, that is something that brings a person glory is, um, oh, what's it called? Imitation is the highest form of flattery. That expression, you know, it's, it's a common human expression, or at least in English. And it's true when people try to be like us, that is, um, uh, that brings us glory. And when we reflect, um, who God is back to him, that brings him glory as well because it it shows the world who he is and it also tells him that we were connected to Jesus. We want to be like him. We want to honor him and be who we were created to be, which is really all for his glory. So that um, there, are, there are many other verses that you could probably pull in that kind of show... God's character um, with the fruits of the Spirit, but I chose these. Go go on a hunt and find some other ones because <laughs> they are out there. And when we can remember that and we can even meditate on these, these verses I just listed here, we can you know, be more inspired to remain in Jesus and to truly reflect God.